it was in March when we last met. Can you believe that it is mid-July we are back? Praise God that you all have kept safe and may that is how it will continue. The Lord will watch over you, keep you safe. But I guess that you would all agree with me <coughs> that we all need to play our little role that uh, we are all stay, uh, staying safe and also that once we have opened the church unless unless god forbid that comes from the government we may remain open and for that we need to 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 look to the rules that uh, i'm sure that they're not all that comfortable and uh, at times even probably they do frustrate but they are for the good of each one of us so if we will make sure that uh, we will keep that two meter distance when uh, ticking the box uh, that you are here staying where the mark is to stay sanitizing our hands when it is needed and also at the end of the service kindly do take the pew sheet you have with you with you that not to leave it behind and it is again part of that keeping each other safe that uh, uh, I want to welcome you and I want to welcome those who are joining us on the YouTube a huge big thank you to William and his mother his assistant that Shelley they have been working hard a number of times we came here to practice and so on so everything what is happening now people all over the world they can hear exactly the same word what i am saying or oh there it is uh, you, yeah that you can see it, that it is on big thank you to the team at the back as well joe is there that uh, dealing with the uh, video projector so we have got the service up there but obviously that if you find easier to to look from the sheet a few sheets than few sheet has got it as well you might be wondering that uh, where are the church wardens where is becky and uh, you can appreciate that uh, those young mums they have been looking after not homes husbands who are working from homes but also they were children's mothers as well as their teachers and both those families, they had the opportunity to go away for the weekend. And I actually did encourage us that we will manage, you should go have a little break. So they will be somewhere listening as well that what we are doing here, they are watching us as well somewhere. Also that uh, David who had mentioned that uh, there is appeal from Christian Aid that for help next sunday that david will put a box or whatever it is that there so if we can contribute so that uh, that ministry as well will be there that uh, we help others that who are in need i think i have covered everything yeah one important thing that as uh, you notice that when you come in the names are taped it is about as the pew sheet says that uh, test and tra trace program that if you would like to opt out please do let me know or let brenda know so that your name could be removed but i think we all would like to help our country to come out so that god forbidding if something happens we know that uh, uh, that what is going on but in any way that it is your right it is not mandatory that if you would like to to be off out from that uh, program then please do one of us let me know let us now come before the Lord. Let us gather our thoughts together. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you. And a big welcome to Ellen, of course. We are not going to sing, please, but he will be playing preparing us to, to minister as uh, to, to worship the Lord. Over to you, Alan.
faithful one whose word is life come with saving power to free our praise inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your son jesus christ our lord amen, amen. we come to god as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and his peace but before we say the set words i would like to encourage us to have a little time of quiet it's a long time since we have been in the church allow god's spirit to minister to you and together god of mercy we acknowledge that we are all sinners we turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do for the sake of jesus who died for us forgive us for all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sin, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Iwan is going to come and do the Bible. <coughs> reading the reading is no it's not working The reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, reading verse 12 to 25. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who has subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you the glory. And Lord, what a joy to be back together here as a family of believers, here in St. Mary's, to worship you, to praise you, to bring the needs and petitions of ourselves, our family, our community, our country, and humanity to you. And Lord, right at the beginning, we pray and ask that cover us, this building, in the blood of our Saviour. So Lord, that we may stay safe, this place may stay safe in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And now, Father, I ask that pour your Spirit upon each one of us. So Lord, as we ponder upon your word, may your Spirit speak to us. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Paul is here talking of suffering and of the glory. Throughout human history, people have tried to answer to the question of suffering in the world. Philosophers, they have been wrestling with this question long, long before our Saviour came into the world. Even antagonists, they have been wrestling with the question. And I believe that all the religions of the world, they have wrestled to answer this question that why there is suffering in this world. We are not, of course, dealing with the philosophers, but when we think of the religions, different world religions, they have different understanding of the problem. Some believing that perhaps there are two gods. One is a good god from whom all the good things come. Another is a bad god that who does the bad things. You just need to look into those who uh, do believe in a number of different gods. There you will find it. Others have come up with the idea that it is actually the same god. At times he does good, at times he does bad. Still, others believe in fatalism. It happens, it happens. But yet there are people that who hold to the view that it is God, he is probably good, but when he created the world, he pretty did a bad job. But when we come to the biblical faith, the understanding, I believe, the general understanding is so widely known in the Christian circles that we know perhaps by heart. The root is found in Genesis chapter 3, where indeed we do read that God did sow all the wonderful seeds. Everything he made was beautiful, but humanity rebelled, and hence the thorns, the thistles, the diseases, the illnesses came along. I believe that during these few months when we have been going through these difficult times that if not all of us, some of us sure have wrestled with the question that why do we suffer? Because when you look to the biblical understanding, yes man rebelled, the first Adam rebelled, but the second Adam, Christ Jesus, the Son of God, he paid the penalty, crushed the head of evil destroyed the eternal death. But perhaps during these times, some of you, maybe others, those who are listening, that have wondered that fair enough, Christ came, he dealt away with the sin, then why we do still suffer? I don't know about you, but I do meet regular Christians who find it very, very hard. That when we are Christians, we belong to Christ, we are saved, but we suffer the same fate what everybody else do suffer. I, of course, thank God that in our church the Lord has been very merciful. I do not know many people that who had even the mildest uh, sort of uh, symptoms of the COVID-19, 
But the reality is that if you look the world scene, there are Christians, they're not idiots, but because they were holding to that understanding that Christ has come, viruses can't touch us. But sadly, they did die. Many Christians have died too. Why do Christians suffer even when Christ has died? When Christ has set us free? I believe that in this passage we read, Paul does give us a glimpse or to make sense while we go through our time on this earth. He has pointed out four different things concerning the suffering. The first one is that he says suffering and glory belong together. It is as though they are married and it is such a union which cannot be divorced. Where there is glory, there is suffering as well. And where there is suffering, there will follow glory too. Our Savior is a wonderful example himself. He did not claim the crown of glory before he died on the cross. And by the way, you probably noticed that I haven't put the, the uh, brass cross there because some people requested that wooden cross will be the one to remind us the suffering of Christ. That stands as a symbol that Christ did suffer too before he entered into his glory. And Jesus himself, chapter 16, John 16, verse 33, did say that in this world you will have trials and tribulations, but have heart, I have overcome. Jesus never ever promised glory straight away. It was through the door of suffering. Suffering and glory belong together. Second, Paul talks about is that suffering and glory characterize two different ages. Age of suffering while we are on this side of the life and age of glory when we are on the other side of the life. So praise God, Holy Spirit fills our hearts with joy, but that joy at times is taken away because of the suffering. But glory goes to the Savior whose promise is this, that once we have completed uh, this journey and we enter into the second age, i.e. life after this life, there is no suffering. There is absolute sharing in the glory of God's Son, Jesus Christ. Third, <coughs> excuse me, that Paul says, suffering and glory, though are inseparable, yet are not comparable. As we read in the passage, what God has in store for us as a glory, there is nothing to be compared with the suffering we go through today. And how I pray that the Lord will give us the strength that when we grow, we do suffer, that we remember that there is huge, big rewards waiting for us there. In fact, Paul says that we will be co-heirs with Christ Jesus, our Lord. Fourth, he says that suffering and glory concerns both God's children and God's creation and praise God, not only us, but the whole created order, the whole universe, one day will be set free and will join in that glory what God has in store for us. God's creation suffers and so does do his people. But, but we thank God that the indwelling of the Spirit gives us joy and the coming glory gives us hope. But the interim suspense gives us indeed the pain. So what shall we say? I would say that uh, we are 
in half-sailed condition. Perhaps sounds a bit, bit a, a, a controversial uh, wording, but I believe that half-sailed condition is what we are here at the moment. In this condition, firstly, we have the Holy Spirit to give us comfort and assurance and help us change daily into the likeness of Christ. Yes, we groan inwardly, but we want to be liberated. We eager, eagerly wait for our adoption as children of God and the redemption of our body. It is in this hope, and it is for this hope, that we have been saved. We patiently wait for it. May God fill us with that joy that in spite of all the hardships here, that there is a reward in heaven for all those who remain faithful to their calling. May God increase faith in us. Amen. Alan is going to play something for us just to sit back to reflect what we heard or perhaps read once yourself again the passage and see what the Spirit says to you. Over to you. and we are encouraged that uh, we will remain seated when saying for instance creed together let us declare our faith in God and together we believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth we believe in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and passed hard, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again in accordance with him. for today.
today, the sixth Sunday after Trinity. God, uh, Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We are now going to bring our needs and petitions to God's throne of grace. Our prayers will be a little bit different today. To start with, that uh, generally the structure of the intercessions is that praying for the church, for the world, for those who are not well among us, and then those who are now in glory. I rather would like today to begin our prayer time by thanking God for our brothers and sisters who during this corona uh, pandemic have gone to the Lord. Praise God that uh, there is only one person, perhaps, perhaps not 100%, who died because of the coronavirus. The rest all have gone to glory in their own right time. We will God give God thanks right at the beginning of our intercession for them. Secondly, because it is live stream, when it comes to praying for those who are not well among us, I will just say that let's now pray for all those who are not well among us, but I will not mention the names, but we will have a little time of quiet, and quietly each one of us, we can whisper those names and bring them to God's throne of grace, God's healing. Let us pray. Let us pray, first of all, let us thank God for our brothers and sisters who worshipped together with us here, but are now in glory. Father God, we continue to pray for their families, for their friends as well. You give them your comfort your assurance. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> and Father, now in the name of Jesus, we pray for the Church of Christ, the Church Universal. Lord, we pray wherever people lift their hands to you, that you will hear their cry. Where, Lord, people are preaching your word, may they have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And Father God, we remember our brothers and sisters who suffer for the sake of faith in you. Lord, you reach out to them in their time of need. Lord, we pray for those who persecute your people. May, Lord, they be forgiven, for they do not know what they're doing, and their hearts may be open to the riches of your grace. Lord, in your mercy. And Father God, we thank you for the church in our own country. Lord, we thank you and we bring before your Lord throne all the leaders of different denominations. But Lord, we especially pray for our own bishops, our diocesan bishop, others with him, our archdeacon, Heshtar, Ari Yadin, churches within our Dinui. Lord, as like us, most of churches are trying to open their doors for public worship. Lord, we pray for wisdom, for understanding, courage for all your people. And above all, Lord, we pray that as we pray for ourselves, we pray for our Dinui. Keep each one of them safe, Lord, protected in the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Father God, we thank you for the church here in Hayes. Bless the ministry of all churches in Hayes. But above all, Lord, we pray for our own church. Lord, thank you for men and women, Lord, who so bravely give their time, 
come out so Lord that the church can be ready to open for worship for your people Lord you reward them richly we pray and father once again we bring every church family under the mighty protection of our Savior Lord Jesus Christ be at home or be the go out oh Lord you keep them safe from all eventualities we ask Lord in your mercy and Father God we continue to pray for the world world Lord that has been devastated with this virus we Lord ask in the name of Jesus relent and we ask Lord that may the right vaccine be found and Lord that people may be able to live normal lives once again wisdom and understanding Lord for all, for all those scientists throughout the world who work and Father we remember the big powers Lord for reason or other Lord they find ways to be Lord antagonized and Lord be against each other but we pray Lord in these times of crisis that humanity may work together for your glory Lord in your mercy and Father God we specially thank you for our own land we pray for our government Lord we may not always agree with them with their policies but Lord it is our God-given duty and responsibility to pray for them and we pray Lord that be with them give them the wisdom the understanding they need to lead the nation Lord through these difficult times Lord we thank you for our National Health Service thank you Lord for doctors and nurses all others Lord staff in hospital in hospices Lord who go out and face the dangers that they may give hope and life to others bless their work Lord we pray Lord in your mercy and now Lord as your word compelled us we bring before your throne of grace all our brothers and sisters who are not well among us anyone among them Lord who is not well we lift them to your grace O Lord and ask that stretch your hand to heal your people Lord your body was broken so Lord that people may have healing in you Lord in your mercy Amen. and Father God we pray for the friends and family of Terry Wheeler who has died Lord comfort all of them we pray and now once again Lord in the name of Jesus we pray for our community Lord surround this dear community in our patch Lord in your loving care in your protection keep us safe from all eventualities and Lord as our schools prepare now during the holidays how to go back to normalities in September all wisdom understanding we pray for them merciful father and please join with me as we say the lord's prayer our father in heaven service is a little different can I invite someone to please bring the offertory box so you can pray that 
uh, as uh, you probably note and uh, have noticed that uh, there won't be any plate coming around. There is a box that they, uh, when you come, you do put your gifts, or if not, then when you're going out, box will be still at the back, so when you go or going out, you can put your gift in there. Let us pray. Father God, we give you the glory. Thank you, Lord, that everything in heaven and on earth belongs to you. And Lord, we acknowledge all things come from you, O Lord, and of your own, we give it to you. Amen. Let us turn our hearts towards God to receive his blessings. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. And before I hand over to Alan, just a couple of things to remind that uh, as uh, we will finish, that we will not congregate around the areas we used to, neither at the door, that it was a wonderful eight o'clock that I did say that I would love to hug you, but because you know that we need to keep the distance and uh, make sure that we just say hello and we go and somebody said, no, I said, no, we need to hold our feet. So obviously after a long time we are meeting, if you would like to, 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 uh, to spend a little time together, then please spread it out, uh, spread out on the grass and talk there, but obviously keeping the safe distance. That uh, also, that, uh, that remind that uh, the church during these last few weeks or so was opened three times uh, a week, that uh, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday for private prayers, but uh, for the sake of keeping the place safe, that for private prayers, the church will be open now only on Thursdays between 10 to 12. And uh, I know that some of you probably would like to come and pray other times. If so, please do give me a ring and I will make sure that somebody is here to open the door for you. But my hope is that we should remember that wherever we are, the Lord does hear our prayers and we do not need to be always coming back. It is just to protect each one of us because uh, what we are doing that when eight o'clock people come, they do wipe the seats where they have been seated. But 1030 seats, we are hoping that we don't need to wipe. So we go, so two days, nobody comes then as the medical aid that it will be all okay. So for that, if at all possible, please do pray at home. But if you want to come some other day, by all means, do come. I will be only too happy to open for you. And once again, as that has become almost St. Mary's slogan, stay safe, stay blessed. And over to you.